thank you for tuning into this defensive webinar. Um, it's not ideal not all being able to get together, but I think um, sometimes you, you just need to find solutions and, and make sure that everybody's uh, still got an opportunity to improve their practice. Um, so tonight we're going to have a look at, um, so there's, there's going to be a little bit around the micro skills of the taco and um, how we can strip it right back, how we can make it safe safe to do if you're if you're not entirely sure what we're doing how you break the tackle down into three parts so pre-tackle the tackle and the post-tackle um what what defense looks like um from an organized uh an, or, an organizing perspective and what defense looks like um within our core games here so a lot of a lot of the examples i'll use tonight will be based around newcastle falcons um simply because um, you're rewarded for different things in Newcastle Falcons. So you're rewarded with um, how quickly you can get back into the defensive line, your RTA. You're rewarded with uh, with your line speed. So you get if you bring enough line speed, then you get the ball back if you touch first receiver. Um, there's also other way, other things, uh, aspects onto that. So if you go and pressure first receiver, they might you might force an error out of them, or they might they might move the ball um, a little bit early, and you'll get an intercept, things like that. And you know, there's there's ways and means that we can uh, we can challenge we can challenge the defense's uh, self-organizing skills but then also their understanding of what we're looking for defensively and our principles around that um so uh, defensively our there's going to be a quiz at the end of this uh and i will send the link through for that just checking we're still on yep we're still on I will send the link through for that, um, but one of the one of the, the one of the questions within that quiz is uh, it, it want you to design a defense focused game for one of the following. So you don't have to do them all. You can just pick one, probably one that's most relevant to you, um, and 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 the challenge of the numbers that are there as well, and how you get how you get everybody loads of reps, and um, how you make sure you're able to coach everybody, and 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 what you're going after with within that as well. So. Um, the, the quiz itself, there'll be a reward for, there'll be a prize for the, the age group who can get the most accumulative points. So the more of you that do it, the better. Uh, moving on. Okay, so while this is a defensive webinar, we, you know, the, the game's all joined up and they both lead into each other. So look, these down, down the right hand side, these are core rules and they are used to develop good habits and training and promote and promote those habits when players are in matches as well. So motor memory muscle memory the things that we do you, know, you get good at what you put time into so when we're playing these four games and i'd like to think that we all have one of these four games within our within our our sessions every single time whether that's a warm-up game or that whether it, it makes the you know the the whole part whole part of your game or if it's a chunking session where you build into it you go you go a flip flop where you go game skill game skill game skill i'd like to think that you've got elements or or these games as a whole in each of your sessions. So um, the core rules remain the same throughout these games. So the ball carrier must take the ball moving. You know, that's just a really good habit for us to go to build a bit of momentum, use a bit of footwork to get in behind the defenders. And this is to promote players working early off the ball and so that they're in a good position when they are on the ball. Um, number two, all touches must be two-handed on the shorts. Why? This is to promote the defender shutting down the ball carrier ball carrier space and it lowers their body height into the contact area and look, there's there's other things around that where look if we place high value on on being really close or getting our head close to the attacker um then then let's be really hard on that as well we've got an opportunity to really hammer our ztas here and it could be things like it could be things like body position and body language defensively it could be things like you know even though we're playing a touch game that we've got a really strong bear crawl type position and um, when we're rucking over um, and then, and then, just things around you know attitude and effort. You know, our when when our teammates make a mistake, are we are we are we encouraging them or are we getting on them? Because um, you, you guys know yourself. Um, you know, confidence is contagious, as is negativity. It's contagious. So we want to make sure that we're relentlessly positive in everything that we do. You know, mistakes are going to happen, but if kids are iding this iding opportunities to you know, get the ball back defensively and they go after it, it doesn't work, then we just we praise the decision in the first place because execution will come as it goes. Number three, uh, the ball carrier must look to avoid contact while still going forward. Why? This is to promote players attacking the space and avoiding defenders while trying to keep the ball alive. So in, you know, maybe in the early stages of um, 
for some players of uh, mini rugby, they're really, really evasive. You know, they're just outstanding TIG players and um, they're always looking to attack the space and that space is sometimes behind them, round to the side and away across the other side of the pitch. But then for others who have developed a little bit earlier, um, they, you know, for them, they just want to carry through players and, and while that might be successful at mini rugby, um, they're going to get to maybe under 15s and 16s and and that's when defences start to get a little bit more organised. The line speed starts to come. They start to get double tackles. So, so we want to promote footwork as early as possible. And look, if if we are carrying straight into defenders, generally it slows our ball down, and there's a higher chance that we'll get held up. And there's a higher chance, look, a, a target that's running straight at you is more likely to get banged than it is um, than than one that's evasive. So, look, if we can promote promote trying to get between defenders as early as possible, then look, we're going to have really successful attackers. But we're also, on the flip side of that, we're going to have defenders that can react to really late changes of angle, like whether they're whether they're defending the ball carrier right in front of them or or having to having to take cues of what of what um support runners are doing or what ball carrier is doing. Um if we're either side of the defender that's so we call it lead either side of the, the lead defender who's defending ball carrier so we really want to look at you know when we're, we're defending as a team or as a unit you know we want to look at defending in change of three four and five and um, just depending on what you're where, where you are on the pitch and what you're going after um number four when touched or tackled the ball carrier must fall forward then recall into place and look, this is just a really it's just a really positive habit to get into because if we land on the ball it's, it's so much harder to jackal, but then it also gives you an opportunity to, to have that second fight and fold to get that ball as far back as possible. So if you think about, you know, defence and jackal, and look, we're going we're gonna to get we're gonna get into the breakdown on another um, webinar slash workshop, <coughs> pardon me. If you think about, you know, where, def- where jacklers are going to try and anticipate where the ball is. So you land on ball, they go to where the ball is, and then you you manage to, 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 to place the ball, you know, maybe half a meter further back, then that, that makes a big difference when you're just about to get cleared out. So within each of these core games, you know, these are things that that if you've got two coaches, you know, one coach can go after one and two, one coach can go after three and four. And it, it, it just really helps us in the things that the, the, the little one percenters that, that help us pull together a team performance and help us develop and help us on our next stage of rugby as we go. So what that looks like in defence, so again, these core rules are used to develop good habits in training and promote those habits when play, when players are in matches. So the core defence principles remain the same throughout all of these games. So when the ball's in play and a tackle happens, we want to reload into the line within three seconds. Why? If the attacker are looking to play to space at pace, we need to make sure that we have an organised defensive line, that we are organised quicker than they have the ball available. So if an attack measurable is two, three, four second rucks, whatever our level is. Um, and even further for, even further down the chain at mini rugby, there's nothing wrong with putting a number on that and saying we want to play quick. Because look, as a club, our overarching principle is speed kills. And that is for attack, defense, counter attack, transition, um, everything that you can think of, our overarching principle is speed kills. So if the attacker are looking to play quickly, we need to make sure that we are able to organize quickly. Um, and how we can measure that, manage that, reward that, challenge that. So if we take Newcastle Falcons, for example, you're playing the game, uh, let's say it's 6v6, for example, we're playing the game, a touch tackle happens, um, the player lands on the ball, places long arm place, long arm place back a lap, and then a clearer comes over. So as soon as that player, the ball carrier hits the floor, the coach then goes one, two, Three and if the defence aren't organised into what the coach deems to be a, a really organised defensive line, then the defence lose the opportunity to, to for first receiver touch turnover. So the attack can just play. They can just play. They can flatten up. They can do what they want. They can play. Off, they, they don't have to pass the ball from first receiver. And and it just builds really good habits into you know resting at the line rather than on the way to the line. And you see that all the time with. At youth rugby, where you know we want to, we want to look really organised, we want to look really professional, we want to look business like, and and everything that we're doing. If and the, the further down we can get these habits in place, the better we're going to become. 15, 16s, 18s, when they start to get a little bit more serious about the rugby, and 
we we can we we can reward we can reward good organization by simply yeah excellent really like that loved your animation turnover and look it might go to and fro for a little bit but you you, uh, you use your discretion and you go cool for the next one the next the next really quick set that i get i'm just gonna i'm just gonna give you a turnover and then you're gonna play and then look, moving on to two we nominate roles so that it's part of our self-organization if we if we are playstation coaches or xbox coaches whatever you want to call them um and we just shout constantly shout instructions onto the pitch and the players are going to look to us for instructions the, the, the further up the further up the, the the age grades that they go and um and for me i don't think it's a problem for us but we want good decision makers um, we want creative attackers and we want them to make the decisions on the field not to look to us for it um but when we nominate roles we give ourselves coverage and connection by calling out our defensive ruck roles so guard shield leads so guard guard Guards are the players closest to the ruck either side of it, and their job is um, is to protect that channel in there. If you know, a lot of the time you see you see guards get beat on the inside, and like a lot of coaches say, guards' job isn't nine. Well, if nine dummies and goes, that's absolutely guards' job. If nine runs and travels and goes out beyond guard, then it, it becomes shields' job. So shields the next player out after that, and then lead. Lead is the third player out, and they are always on first receiver, regardless of width. And that just allows us to get lots and lots of width in our defensive line, and then we've got lots and lots of width in the defensive line. We then get to explode off the line. So we can't bring line speed if we don't have width, and then and, and we're not set quickly. So <coughs> this is our go forward. So why? Um, we take away time and space through effort and intent. So three fast and aggressive steps forwards, or what we call it, steal five metres, steal five, steal five. That'll cut down the attacker's time and space and it'll help us to get the ball back. And there's a question in the quiz later on just around, you know, how many different ways um, can you get the ball, can you get the ball back? And um, be great to hear what you guys think there. And look, there's loads of, there's loads of ways that we can do this around, you know, either forcing another from the attacker, making them pass a little bit earlier. Um, you know, Every, everything is harder for the attack when they don't have time and when they don't have space. And then from there, if uh, if if they do manage to, to the, there's a bit in the middle of this that <coughs> that we've not put in because we want, like I want you you guys to simplify this as much as possible. But we want to limit we want the limit to the attack to two passes max. So that means we're going hard after first receiver. Then the second player that gets the ball is getting whacked. So that the only place that we never go beyond the ball, but the only the only way that the defense can move the ball around us is if they play really deep or if they go really high over the top. And it's a risky pass doing that. Then moving on to four, once we've exploded off the line, we need to go and protect our, in, our, our teammates inside shoulder. So the job's not done once we've gone forward. When our defender that we're responsible for moves the ball, we need to move with it to make sure that our teammates trust us to cover their inside and look for opportunities to hunt for ball if they make the tackle or or go and go and support them with a the tackle so if if our defenders pass the ball we don't stop we move and we try and keep our space in the same as it was before with our outside defender and then if our outside defender's man steps back inside we're we're helping them with the double tackle or the counter ruck as we go so keeping it really simple here reload nominate explode protect pretty simple eh? so then if we if we're looking at how we structure a session uh, look I, I do think this is so important in developing good performance habits and we get good at what we put time into and as such we need to ensure that everyone is getting reps in isolation then stress testing the work they've been using you they've they've been doing in isolation in a game context situation so if we consider you know our theme our theme is uh is defense so our warm-up game is nz touch and nz touch might just be 5v5 um with the 5v5 with and that's the one where the defense must have their hands behind their backs so it's focusing on getting really really close to the attacker and you know when and, and going and double defending and what i mean by that is if i go if i go to close down someone and they move the ball then i've got to I've got to move with the ball and try and stay inside um, and protect protect my inside man's shoulders. So maybe this time we've got right the attack. I've got five touches, five shoulder touches, and each time they've got just got to go to ground and lift the ball. So we need to reload, we need to explode, 
and then we need to go and protect if that if that's our um if those are our messages that we're going with and then if we move into so 10 minutes of warm-up game while while the stragglers are still arriving we let them get some reps in we let we we, we look for opportunities to coach rather than coaching itself you know that the nz touch might just be an opportunity. right guys you're going in you're playing nz touch defense have to have the hands behind the back the attack get five five opportunities to go and you, you might not use the five opportunities it might just be straight touch turnover that's what you're rewarding fine absolutely fine and then we might move on to a little bit of isolated skills micro skills around our track and whack and i'm going to show you <coughs> i'm going to show you just in a minute um how you can do that with shields um at a really low intensity that puts a lot of value on footwork shoulder contact and second efforts and then and then after our track and whack, we go and we stress test that in newcastle falcons and newcastle falcons doesn't have to be touch you can play all of these games with tackle. You know, the, it's the, the reason we've named these games is that they all pose different tactical problems, and then and and we have to try and solve those problems, whether that's attack or defence. You know, and it, and it just makes it really easy for us. Well, right, guys, we're at Newcastle Falcons, and the guys should know exactly what they're doing straight away. Um, this session we call this a a, a flip flop session where you go, you've got the bulk of it. Micro skill, macro skill, micro skill, or mickle skill, muckle skill, mickle skill, muckle skill, mickle skill. And then you really stress test what they're doing at the end there with a 5v5 game where it's just, you know, rucks are live. The, you, you're looking at really stress testing what they're doing around the reload, their nominate roles, they're exploding off the line, and then how they protect their teammates inside their shoulders. And look, the, the breakdown would be involved in this, but look, that's, that, that's a discussion for another time um, because you could spend all day on the breakdown as uh, as we go so we are we're, we're, we're going to move forward and have a look at um a bit of track and whack so track and whack it can be a shield it can be it can be just one-on-one -on -one tackle it could be 2v2 um but we'll just go in there's there's a few things that i want you to look at here uh video wise that relate to this and relate to what we want to do um, when we're stress testing it in their bigger games so what makes an effective tackle so first of all we want our players to be split stance in a boxer stance and you know what a quite a question why do we want to be in a split stance well because we push off because before we push off we have to get in a split stance before that so we probably we, we probably gain half a meter or a yard by being in a split stance to start with with a boxer stance our hands are up that just allows us to to punch our hands through if we're going to make that tackle as well so and as we're going we stay tall we keep eyes on our target allowing the tackler to move forward um and it, these are two different types of tackle and two different types of messaging that we can go after um this is a little bit more you know maybe back specific and this one's probably a little bit more um form specific but look it's all it is all joined up um a lot of a lot of what you're seeing around coach development is plant lead foot close to the attacker and yes that's sometimes true but for really tall people or for different types of tackle like tackles around the ruck <coughs> where you're trying to win a collision where it's just it is just high impact combative stuff um you know you you want to get your feet back shoulders forward um, load the gun with a little bit of a knee bend then pull the trigger so shoulder impact and then look to chase feet on, on second second input second efforts um and for me that's zoom shuffle boom so with the zoom that's us going forward so we take space from the attacker we, we take away time and space through intent effort and intent the shuffle is our paddle um you know our check zone so we slow our feet just to counteract any side steps we've done all the hard work already we've closed down their space then the boom is a big solid shoulder contact and then we chase our feet so the hard work starts when the shoulder makes contact and you, the tackle is all about our feet don't focus too much about about our shoulders um and, and, and these examples that that you see in a second is is, is going to highlight exactly why but if if we don't have our feet in the right position in a good position to to, to make a tackle in the first place then we're either going to be over stretching or they're going to be coming back at us because our feet are too far underneath us um so look there's there's loads of there's not one size fits all and there's not one bit of advice fits all so that's why coaching is is as difficult as it is because you've just got to have a look at things and give and give feedback as you see it so this is matthew gaston before his acl injury um i'm just going to check that we are still 
recording pretty please excellent and we did a lot of track and whack stuff so um what you see here is we start in the middle of the square he taps to signify the start of the rep so he'll reload to his line i'll reload to my line um and then i try to put on a bit of footwork and just just notice how i'm holding the holding the shield um i think this is much better for you know i would now actually clasp my hands around the front and use my uh use my hands as a sort of sternum line. So we've got to try and, my arms as a sternum line, so they've got to try and hit below the sternum. Um, but the important thing here is how late he adjusts, how good he is at, at adjusting and adapting to my movement so that he's still able to keep his feet in a good position to get a shoulder shot and then chase his feet after his, after impact. Yeah, really good adjust. And then he's got to stop me getting beyond these two poles here that he's defending so again second effort feet in the ground if your feet aren't in the ground you've got no traction you've got nothing to push forward onto so it's really low impact but it, it can be it, it can be high volume so this is a bit of a conditioning session as well for him reload explode hit chase Reload, explode, hit, chase. So he's loading the gun, pulling the trigger, and you'll see it. Reload, explode, yeah, load the gun, pull the trigger. Really good shoulder punch, and it's 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 music to a coach's ear when you hear the the air coming out of the air coming out of the uh, out of the out of the shield. So as he gets more fatigued. As he gets more fatigued, it becomes harder and harder for him to track. So then, you know, that could be a good, a good, a good warm, not a warm up, but a good primer activity going into this. So this is the, the this clip here is is going live. So there's two poles in the middle. So we've asked all groups to work to the right hand side. So the two players will start either side of the poles. They attack, the defender starts with the ball. They lift the ball to the attacker. They both go around the poles. And from there, they've got to, got to take away the space, get their feet close, um, and make that chop in second effort. So the, the bit that we added in here was that we wanted the tackler to roll east to west to get away from clearers and not get pinged. But we also wanted the ball carrier to present a ball just so that we're getting really good at our habits in here as well. And there'll be things that you notice around like around behaviors around some players lack zoom, some players lack shuffle, some players lack boom. See, please. So these two sm smelly boys, Stu Mellow boys, zoom, shuffle, boom, second efforts, feet in the ground, love it. And you see in there. It's, zoom so he's paddled there he's waited on him so he's had no zoom so success for us is how far up we can make that initial contact so we need to take away their time and space we need to force them into an area that, that, that we feel comfortable with so oh excellent taking away the space nice load the gun pull the trigger good roll poor present though i'm sorry i am just focusing on the boys that are closest another great shot he loaded the gun, pulled the trigger, he got his feet back, shoulders forward, but he waited on him at the pole. And we want them to come around the corner, like reload and explode off the line as quick as they can. So steal five. But he's not letting through. Good stuff. And for a lot of these, a good coaching point could be around knee drop chop. So oh. knee drop chop. Well done. But I'd like him to take away more space. I'd like him to fight harder or stay in front of him. Big shot over there on the second grid there. Take away the space. Excellent. So attackers had zero time to make a decision. It's exactly what we want from our players. That's that is that is RTA. So return to action and steal five. And again, he's a good defender, but he's waited on him to go. He's gave the attacker the the opportunity to go hard at him and make a decision and. Um, run where he wants to. One more, boys. One more. One so more we, each. so we are, we know where we're going. 
before the defender knows where we're going. So, you know, if we end up reacting to something, if we end up reacting to something, it means we've probably not done the work, the, the work that we need to beforehand. So then moving on, it's just some micro skills drills that we're doing with uh, a couple of our senior players. So Lachlan's had a few a few operations on his left shoulder, and he, he does lack a bit of confidence um, within within putting shots on his left shoulder. So we're working pretty hard with him to um, to build confidence into that. And look, we're seeing it every week. His tackle stats are going up every week, and look, he's really keen to learn. And um, I'll probably show you this a couple of times because it's it, it's quite. Um, it's quite slight what you see, um, but it makes a big difference. So if you if you, if you watch Lachlan here, he's a little bit slower to get round. He, he waits, but then he also ha does a little jump and he hovers. And then is when he does that little jump and hovers, the, the attacker gets the gets the upper hand. And and if you just have a look at how how the bag holder is holding the holding the bag, that's at around about sternum, so it forces the tackler to drop. <coughs> the big thing we're looking at here is how our feet are set getting ourselves in a position so that we, when we when we make the hit we can then put a second fight in a second drive in so the hard work starts when we make a, make contact see if you just felt a little bit a little bit lack of power look how much intent he's got and his ability to go and get off the line there so He's waited a wee bit, he's paused and let the defender run at him rather than going and get him. So go and get him before he gets you. Reload. Explode. Check. Hit. Second effort. Love that. Now this is a really interesting one from Tom. So you'll see here the, the, the two yellow cones, the white cone and the green cone. That's just, it, it, it's making a smaller area for us so we can get high reps in a smaller area. And then we move to the bigger area where we're having to work a little bit harder at our tracking. Um, and look, these could be set up all the way along the dead ball area. So you could maybe have eight to 10 areas like this set up where all your players are getting tons of reps. So you go game, reps, game, reps, game, reps. We get good at what we put time into. So what did you notice about Tom's, about Tom's feet there? And just look at this next one. Tell me what you notice about his feet. Again. Good, good finish. Disagree with that feedback, Ian. So now that I've now that we've been able to watch it back and I sent this to Tom and he gets it. So for me, he's he's having to chase. He's having to, he's having to lean because he's planted his feet really early. He's not he's not fought really really hard to get square. So stay get in front and stay in front. So he's reaching on both of those tackles there. He's reaching and he's pretty good at it. Like he'll still complete the tackle, but if we want to go for, you know, best case scenario, then we want him to get in front, stay in front and make nice square shots. So our rules, rugby principles as a, as a group. So we're getting to, to the more team-based stuff. So fill the field, square up to the attacker, get off the line. So steal five. That's our reload explode. Pressure first receiver skills. And limit the defense to two passes max. Reset into the defensive line within three seconds, then repeat and rinse until we get that ball back. Um, and while it looks like a lot, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. There's there's six points there that make up our defensive system. There's way more in our attacking system, but there's six points that make up our defensive system. And within that, you know, fill the field, square up the attacker. That's our RTA. That's our return to action. That's our reload. And then get off the line is our zoom. Pressure first receiver skills, shuffle, and then limit limit the defense to two pass max or could be our boom. And then from there, we reset, we RTA, we return to action. And then if we look at other areas of this and the nines role in here, we we have at senior level, we have been playing in a it, it's like a kick trap. So we try to show the we try to show the kick space, the chip in behind space all the time so that it encourages teams to kick to us because there's not a lot of teams that are kicking in our league. Um, so we, we want them to, to kick the ball. So we have nine in the bobby right behind right behind the ruck, but then also plugging holes in, in at guard shield lead and then plugging holes in the short side. So they're going from the bobby 
to short side, Bobby to short side. Just just looking at the triggers of nine and triggers of ten, triggers of potential kickers who could kick, put the kick into that area, and then when when they see that trigger and the, they've already moved there and caught the ball, um, so we're showing the space and then we're we're moving the space really late. So ideally, we're looking for double tackles every time, so two in every tackle, and those tacklers will reset to the negative side, so the short side where the balls came from, and then and then. For that, we'll then fold two play, two between between the fifteen channels. Sometimes we'll just fold two in general, but um, uh, that's to try and get parity. So if we've if we've lost two defenders to the tackle, then we fold two in there, and the two tacklers take the place of the two that have folded. So we always try and have uh, equal spacing relative to where the ruck is and where the ball is on the field. Um, Another part for us is we're, we're always looking to stay connected to the defenders either side of us. So you'll hear you'll hear things like chase connection, chase connection, and that you know if we're looking at if we're looking at guard shield lead or we're or we've we've RTA'd, we've got to the defensive line really quickly. We've done all the hard work, we've done all our scanning on the way to the line, and then you know th this has been a bit of a difficult one with the senior side of to try and try and adjust people adjust how they were man watchers, and I'm trying to get them to be ball watchers. So. We, we, we do all our scanning early on our way there. Cool. And then the last thing we look at is the ball because that's our trigger to get off the line. So if we if we react to the ball once it's in our eye line and we're man watching, we probably lose a metre and a half, an opportunity to take a metre and a half away. Whereas we get split stance, we've got our boxer stance, we're looking at the ball and when, as soon as nine's passed, we explode off the line, we steal five metres and then we check our feet. We check our feet when first receiver catches the ball or <clears throat> if we feel we can go and make a shot on them, we'll, we'll go and make a shot on them there. So the, these on on this pitch graphic, the, there's not. These are just phrases. Um, so if we're looking at defending this one here, we probably want to go a little bit harder at the breakdown in in our twenty two. Um, just, I think that's when teams play narrower. They they they're a little bit more direct, and if we can get an opportunity to slow them down and get a, some better connection, allow our guys to chase connection and organize, then I think it's. Um, it's going to benefit us and like we only want one in the backfield in the 22 we want as many people in the front line as possible and that's and that's the case of almost every team where the closer you get to the opposition's line the more players they'll have in the in the front line um we want to get the ball back through dominant tackles and we want to force kicks like if we hit them behind the gain line twice or we stop them making more than uh, we limit them to two passes max one pass max you know, maybe three or four times, they'll probably kick us the ball back. But the big thing for us is if we steal five, hit them behind the gain line two or three times in a row, generally we'd either force it either or or they kick the ball back to us. Um, when we get to the middle of the pitch, there's 50-20 opportunities. So we want to, <coughs> pardon me, we want to uh, we want to have two in the backfield. So on on either 15, around either 15, so that we can cover the kicks. And if, if they kick long down the middle, that's fine. We've got the ball. If they kick into this space just short, then we've got our kick trap to sort it out. Um, how quickly can we get back in the game? So that's a three-second RTA. And just something to go by, the three Ds, duckle, duckle, duckle. No, just kidding. Dispossess, deny, dictate. Because that's what we're trying to do. So what's the point of defence? It's to get the ball back. And if we can't get the ball back, what are we trying to do? We're trying to slow them down. Why we're trying to slow them down so that we can get organized, so we can get our ruck rolls right, we can get width. Um, and if we get that, if we if we're able to slow them down and get organized, that allows us to bring line speed. And we when we can bring line speed, um, we can go and put them under pressure and try and force an error or force them into kicking the ball back to us. Now, we uh, through these these principles here. There are two very good videos of us defending with a few mistakes in there. Um, granted, and then there was one pretty poor one of us defending the the Melrose first team defending, and I just want you to have a think about these. So you, can, if you want, you can write these down right now, and I want you to, I, I want you to have a think about identity in action. So can you see this identity in action for us? So we we want a relentless press. We want to limit them to two passes, and in the wide channels, so in the fifteen meter channels, we want to go heavy. We call that the danger zone. So if teams want to move the ball into there, we're gonna we're gonna counter ruck them quite heavily. First one, bigger away, 
22 meter drop out. When we kick the ball, it's high speed running. So we need to run as fast as we can. Catch, check our feet. Feet in the ground, second efforts, great hit. <coughs> Fold two. Pressure, pressure, pressure. Counter ruck. Decision not to. 12 goes to give us parity. Feet in the ground, second efforts. The hard work starts when our shoulder makes contact. Are we organised? Are we looking? Right, eyes are on the ball now. Ball's the trigger. Reload. Explode. Double shots. Ball, ball, ball. Yep, adjusting really nicely. We force them to kick. And from there, we've given ourselves an opportunity to counter ruck. Counter ruck principle move the ball the widest channel. Great score. So, think about identity and action there. Fill the field. In the tackle itself, feet back, shoulders forward, load the gun, pull the trigger, fill the field, limit them to two passes max. RTA in three seconds. Limit them to two passes max. Organize in three seconds. Guard shield lead. Pretty poor guard shield lead, but we're going. Still five. Limit them to two passes. Reload in, th in three seconds. Rinse and repeat until we get the ball back. <laughs> so here is an example of us doing it poorly. So our initial our initial contact's pretty good. Um against a good attack. But then we consider guard shield lead. Good contact. So here, where's tackler went? Have we folded two? Guard, shield, lead. One, two, three. So who's on first receiver? Question, question for you earlier. Out of guard shield lead. Who is on first receiver regardless of width? And here, one, two, three, four, five, six, because he ends up getting to strewn. Six players are taken out by one pass. That's why it's really important that it, when we get our ruck rolls right, guard shield lead, it gives us loads of width. So in reality, we should have one, two, three, we should have Tam or Lachlan on first receiver, which would allow Craig to push out, Struan to push out, it would push out. Because at the moment, if we talk about from ruck to touchline, we've got 10 defenders in here and they've got five attackers. So we bring good line speed, but our spacing is just way too narrow. So we look at that again. Initial contact's pretty good. Reload. Explode off the line. Shot. You don't you don't really hear anybody organizing or calling. We're really narrow. And as such, two passes are able to take out eight defenders, ten defenders, let's call it. Now going back to these here. Fill the field. Square up to the attacker. When I say square up to the attacker, I mean that. I mean, we have to square up to first receiver. Lead us to square up to first receiver. As ideally, we want to force them back inside. We want to get in their eye line and force them back inside. Limit them to two pass max. It's the same thing, really. Um, and this next one, this is from the game at the weekend past. So, identity and action. What can you see here? And then if we look at Zoom Shuffle Boom, or if we look at 
whatever you're wanting you, your agent stage appropriate way of coaching the game is. But for me, look at the player's feet. You've seen it in the bigger game there. There was a couple of tackles where, you know, feet in the ground, second efforts. The tackle is about the feet. The shoulders just help us. Roley gets into that space, into their eye line to turn them back inside. Heavy on the counter ruck. I'd like James to, to go up with Elliot there as well. Heavy on the counter ruck in the wide channels. Three second reset. Poor steel five, but we're we're pretty organized. Lachlan does really well. Force them back inside. <coughs> Reloading three seconds. Square up to first receiver. Good shot, gets the ball away. I'd still like James to be higher there. And I'd like us to have a go, to go defensively. Reload, explode, excellent. Double shots, feet in the ground, second efforts, reloaded in three seconds. Square up to first receiver. Good double shot. Roll out. I'm guard, I'm shield, I'm lead. You can see them calling it. Dylan does well to go and try and force them inside, but we need guard and shield to go with them. Guard, shield, lead, go. So a little bit passive there. I'd like us to be more aggressive, but good shot. Feet in the ground, second efforts, adjust height. So there's a lot of these guys that are really good at reacting to good, good number 13, Connor Spence. But if we look at that, we need guard, shield, lead, everybody to go up square. We kind of cut under. So lots of good stuff. Lots of good stuff, but if we go to this point here, we've got loads of coverage. We filled the field there. We need to go and get a double tackle if we can. Good shot. And then this next one, we need to go forward square. So guard, shield, lead. Lead should be on first receiver if he comes into this space. Shield should be defending this space in here, this channel. And guard should be defending this space and channel. But our first movement is sideways. So they cut back inside, cut back inside, and we're scrambling there. But Dylan Colbert makes a great tackle and gives us an opportunity to reset. Good shot. So going back to... What we see here, you see a lot of this in action. And you kind of get bored of doing these things really, really well. Because they matter. The better we get at these, the better we get, the more time we spend with the ball. And if you think about, if we have two or three coaches, we go, right, tonight you're going to look after the defence. Great. And then when we break into, into our, our track and whack stuff, So in our track and mark stuff, cool, you'll take one group, I'll take another group. Going to Newcastle Falcons, I'll look after the defence, you look after the attack. So are we filling the field? Beep. Are we squaring up to the attacker? I'm lead. Cool, lead is on first receiver then. I'm guard, I'm shield. I'm lead. Cool, excellent, we've got ourselves in a good position. Get off the line, steal five, steal five. Great, we don't go beyond the ball, but if first receiver manages to catch the ball, we just take a really organized line and plant it five meters further up the pitch. From there, we need to pressure first receiver skills. So we need to take away time and space. So go and get them, make them pass early. Force the, like, where can we make them play? Can we make them play in a small area of the pitch? We want to limit them to limit the defense to two passes max. And then when the contact is made, we need to reset into the defensive line within three seconds. And that is the defensive process of going through and through and through. There'll be a quiz attached to the bottom of this link. Please get after it. There's some questions in there. Some of them are silly. Some of them are not silly. But it's just a, a good, good opportunity for me to see 
what your understanding is and, and where and how I can support you. Thank you.